What is up everybody, the History Guy here. I have had a bunch of requests uh, from viewers to play a game on Total War. So I've decided to go with my new favorite mod. I've only done this a handful of times. I did do kind of a first look video of it, but now I'm gonna play a campaign. This is Total War Attila. This is the brand new, finally released Medieval Kingdoms Total War 1212 AD campaign that is available and Playing in medieval times, I can be no one else but my favorite country to play during this time, and that is the nation of England. So we're going to start in 1212, and we're going to take on the role of England, which is right here. Now the difficulty, uh, we could go with hard. I think hard's probably the fairest way to do this, to make it more of a challenge. Now, uh, admittedly, I will say this right up front, I am not that familiar with Total War Attila. I have played to the, the Total War games for years, but I've only got maybe a couple of hours in this particular uh, game. So the mechanics, whatever may be different about it, are not totally familiar to me. So as with any new game that I start, I invite your input, your critique, your criticism, your suggestions. Use that comment section below often. Uh, and let me know your thoughts uh, about what you think I should be doing differently. What am I overlooking? What would you do if you were in my position? And how do you suggest I move forward? Just offer those observations. But let's go ahead and dive into the Kingdom of England. All right, so my understanding is that a big part of this has to do with dealing with the loyalty of your nobles, uh, which makes sense because that was a big part of what was happen happening historically at this time. We're taking over England in 1212 AD, which means we're right at the end of the reign of King John. There's only ever been one King John, and there's a reason for that because King John was terrible. King John's the one who inherits the throne after his older brother, Richard the Lionheart. Their father, Henry, uh, had dealt with rebellions among his sons pretty much throughout his rule. Henry was the, uh, he was the first uh, Plantagenet King of England, Henry II, uh, obviously had dealt with uh, a lot of issues in kind of becoming the king in the first place and uh, and then holding on to that rule, mostly in dealing with his sons. And so John takes over. Uh, John ends up having to sign Magna Carta, and it gets to the point where it's so bad that the nobles actually invite the son of the king of France, I think his name was Louis, to come to England to be the king. And he does that right about the time that John actually ends up dying and leaving the, the throne to his very young son, Henry III. And so Louis never really ends up becoming king, but he could have. So uh, his, history could have been very different if John had lived. But we're going to see if we can kind of forge a new path for our King John. So I'm just looking at some of my information here. Angevin Empire, which is actually how the Plantagenets were known. Plantagenet was not a name that was used during the Plantagenet dynasty. Uh, they were known as the Angevins because uh, the Plantagenets were descended from Geoffrey, the Count of Anjou, who had married Empress Matilda, and it was their son, Henry, who becomes the first Plantagenet king. Uh, so it's not just England that we rule, it's also uh, a nice chunk of France uh, down here. And uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine was the... Uh, she was the Duke of Aquitaine in her own right, and so when she marries Henry II, she brings that with her. Uh, so that, you know, the, the English ruled as much of France as France did at given points in history. Now beyond that, we see, uh, we see kind of the bonuses that we have. The English wool industry was huge. Magna Carta brings public order. Absentee kingship, because John is terrible. Uh, we've got archery law, which gives plus two experience for bow, bow unit recruits. We have weak power right now. Integrity is bad. Tax rate is bad. Growth is good. We are Catholic. Uh, great power. So there's a minor, minor diplomatic penalty with most factions. Uh, there's a food surplus. That's good news. We have a five of papal standing. John didn't, I, I think he actually ended up getting excommunicated by the Pope. So he didn't get along real well with the Pope, especially at the end of his reign. Uh, but that's neither here nor there, really. So the main things we're thinking about here is, number one, we've got to keep our French holdings strong as we deal with any incursions. And we want to try and stay in good standing with the French as much as possible. So honestly, my first diplomatic goal is to, if we can't ally with the French, at least stay out of war 
with the French. Uh, beyond that, then I'm going to look to expand by subduing Wales and then maybe eventually turn our attention north to Edinburgh and the Scots. And of course, we've got Ireland over here as well. So those are kind of my initial thoughts on the direction I'll go with this. But obviously, we need to build a strong kingdom to be able to do that. So here we see some of our key information. We've got our provinces. There's Bordeaux down here in France. We've got Bristol, Colchester, London, Nottingham in the north, and then York in the far north. And uh, York's going to be key, obviously, because of its proximity to Scotland and, of course, Bordeaux for obvious reasons. Our armies, we've got two. We've got the one under the General William uh, with 2,000, just over 2,000 men. We've got Eustace up here in Nottingham with an additional nearly 1,200. Uh, beyond that, then, we've got known factions that exist and uh, not really a whole lot that we have to be concerned about right now. Let's take a look at technology. We've got military and civic technology. I'm inclined to go with civic first. I feel like building up our infrastructure is going to be key. But again, not having a lot of experience with this game, I'm not sure exactly what the best way to go is going to be. But I feel like uh, farming may be the way to go in all of this rather than dealing with architecture and uh, things of that nature. So, well, maybe this is the way to go you know what i'm gonna do that we're gonna work on this this gives us merchant traders uh wine traders coaching in these are things that i think will probably generate some money for me i don't think we can do both military and civic technology no we can do one or the other so let's do the civic technologies first so moving on to our known factions and looking at dis diplomacy here you can see the kingdom of france is ranked seventh overall uh, I am ranked fifth in strength right now. Uh, so France is definitely somebody we want to stay friends with as much as humanly possible. So let's go ahead and see what possibilities we may have to initiate diplomacy here. Uh, let's Speak, see. Military access, break non-aggression pact. A military alliance would be fantastic, but I'm pretty content to start with a non-aggression pact. Uh, it says a moderate likelihood of success, so it's certainly worth trying. They've accepted, so we have a non-aggression pact with France. It's a good place to start. Eventually, maybe we'll move to a defense treaty of some kind, uh, but I'm pretty happy with that right off the bat. Now, let's look over here. We've got Wales. We've got the uh, Kingdom of Connacht over here in Ireland, which we can't see most of Ireland right now. We've got Scotland, or Scotland up here to the north. You can see the things that are affecting our relations at the moment. Uh, the only negative we have is that we're a great power. So uh, what about Wales? About the same. You know, getting along pretty well with both of them right now. Friendly and improving. So there's not, not a lot of reason to change that until we're ready to go to war with Wales, which I think will probably be sooner rather than later. So here we have the initial trade and finance situation. Our tax level is pretty medium. You can see our total income is almost 11000 per turn. Uh, so it's a, a surplus of about 2700 So that's pretty good. York has the lowest public order. It's always the north in England that seems to be the seat of a lot of these rebellions. So a lot of my money is going into army upkeep. Now, interestingly, you know, I, mean, I don't think at this time in history there was really a standing army. Uh, they really had kind of retinues. They would call those up, uh, you know, call up the levies when need be to fight uh, battles, and then they would immediately send them away. But uh, this is long before the time when nations had large standing armies that they just had always kind of sitting around everywhere. Uh, so that's obviously, a, you know, if we didn't have such a large army, we'd have a lot more money. But uh, trade is going to be key, key, key to all of this. So maybe we look at opportunities for trade. Uh, in the midst of everything else that we're doing. Uh, I had a couple people suggest to me that that was going to be something really important was to uh, to deal with trade. Now, founding an empire is not something we can do until we have 18 regions. We only have six right now. There's a lot we would have to gather to become the British Empire. Uh, ask the Pope for money. We've got to have papal favor at seven. Um, so that would be something nice to do when the time comes. Diplomacy. Let's go back to diplomacy and look at folks that we might want to be able to trade with. Maybe France is a place to go with this. Uh, so let's see if we can get a uh, treaty of some kind here. Trade agreement, there we go. 
high success chance. Excellent news. So that gains us a little bit of money. You know, every little bit helps long term if you think about it. Now, I doubt that this is going to happen, but I'm curious to know what might happen if we tried to tell whales that they should become our vassal. Welcome. And let us be honored by your Low likelihood of success. Um, what can we offer for them to be willing to do that? Uh, probably nothing. All right, so they want a non-aggression pact, and they'll pay me 200 for it. No, that is not going to happen. Sorry, dude. All right, so let's look and see if there's anything that we want to spend money on as far as upgrades and things of that nature. I'm looking to the north. I'm thinking that York is probably the place I want to focus on first. Um, we can... Now we need a seven surplus population to upgrade that. We can go to a market square. So that would be a big upgrade, but that would be very costly. Uh, yarn hut. We can't build the stronghold because we don't have the funds for that. We need 13500 So maybe what I'll do is I'll wait a turn, and then we'll build that in York. I feel like that's probably something helpful. I'm going to look for a few more trade agreements. Uh, I'm going to look here to the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, it looks like we actually have an alliance with them at the moment. Uh, we must already have a trade agreement with us, with them as well. So who else could we trade with? What about Scotland? I guess we already have one with them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start moving my huge army out and start heading toward Wales. The plan is going to be to march on Wales pretty quickly. And uh, we could probably bring the Nottingham army as well. In fact, I'll go ahead and start moving them too. And then we're going to go ahead and end the turn and see what all happens. Oh, we can still assign a provincial governor. Okay, here's our family tree. Uh, so the power is pretty weak in the Angevin dynasty as it was at this time. It was fairly new. Uh, they had gone through a couple of sons. John was not a good king. Uh, so you can see here my sons. My son Henry is my heir, followed by... Oh, Richard is the heir, which is kind of weird because Henry was, in fact... He's five years old. Richard is three. Henry was the one who succeeded. So, And then Joan. And then over here we've got some other folks. So who am I going to appoint as governor? I really don't have anybody unless I go to one of these folks over here. All right, how about John. So we're going to assign John to that office. All right. Let's see what happens. I think it flies through pretty quickly. All right, we've got an offer of diplomacy from Scotland. Uh, they want a non-aggression pact in exchange for a payment of 300. Uh, I feel like we could probably do a little better than that, couldn't we? Yeah, I think so. I tell you what, Scotland, if you give me 900... Then we'll talk. Ah, okay. Sucks for you. Yeah, it's going through pretty fast through all of these countries, considering there are so many nations on this uh, game. Obviously, those are going to start to shrink as nations get gobbled up by other nations. Another diplomacy suggestion. This is Wales, a non-aggression pact. Yeah, that's not happening, guys. Sorry. We're about to be aggressive. All right, the fate of the Angevin. Whispers have alerted the king that nobles are conspiring, thinking him weak. The king of England must prove his worth and pr return prestige to the English crown. France has inflicted great defeats on the Angevin dynasty in recent years. Returning the favor would quell these rebels, if only momentarily. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to declare war on France. I definitely want to sit that out for now showing himself a coward the king of england now must face his ambitious nobles they have prepared a document which will limit the power of the english crown to sign it would be the utmost humiliation to refuse to sign it would surely sign civil war so historically john signs it and then immediately goes about going to war with all the people who forced him to sign it so uh, kind of an interesting thing that happened if you want to see a cool movie i don't know how incredibly historically accurate it is but uh paul giamatti who's a great actor played john adams in hbo's john adams series he plays king john in a movie called ironclad 
uh, which shows the very end of King John's reign and his siege of, I think it was Rochester Castle. is really well done. Uh, so obviously the, it, it could be a dangerous time to go to war with Wales with everything else that's happening, but I think King John's going to die in like a year or two anyway. So I think we're going to go ahead and do this. Diplomacy. Okay, Wales. Be welcome. I declare I war on you, sir. For my people in our dealings today. All right, so my allies are Flanders and the Holy Roman Empire. I am not going to call them. I don't need them. Thankfully, Wales has no allies. So now we're going to go ahead and march up and lay siege to Carnarvon Castle. Let them cower like kennel dogs. Your next command. With two armies. Lay siege to the settlement. So the first one gets there is 1100. They've got... A reinforcing army it looks like I've got him outnumbered, but uh, with a siege, that's going to take a while. So uh, let's start with a couple of siege towers and a battering ram, shall we? It's going to take some time to get that done. Meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and build the stronghold in York. Uh, you can see how important that is. I, I need to have a strong. Uh, a strong defensive structure in the north where Scotland is involved. So it's going to take seven turns to get that done. And that's really all we're going to spend our money on for the time being. And I think that's probably all we're going to do. I thought I did this, but I guess maybe I did not. Oh, we don't have any governor's sign assigned, that's why. Uh, let's assign one in Bordeaux. We're going to put John there. And I think for now, that's all we'll do. We may issue an edict in one of the governed provinces. What edicts shall we issue? Uh, I'm pretty content to just kind of let that sit for now. Provincial edicts, here we go. We can say religious tolerance, organize militia drilling. That might be a good one to do. Construct rural way houses. That'll improve the wealth. That might be good. Raise levies, army and crew... Uh, tax rate, empower the local ruler. I think we'll do that for now. And eventually we'll need to appoint governors in the other places too, but for now I'm not going to worry a whole lot about that. Scotland comes back. Uh, King William, age 70 of Scotland. He's offering 600 this time for a non-aggression pact. It still doesn't feel like a lot of money, but honestly I'm inclined to accept just because I like the security. Uh, Scotland and France are traditionally what they call the old alliance, A-U-L-D alliance. Uh, and so England was always dealing with one or the other or both. And so keeping both of those two placated is going to be really important for me right now. The Holy Roman Empire is going to war with the Duchy of Bavaria. Um, sure, I'll enter the war. I'm not going to do anything for you, but I want to keep you happy. Okay, here we go again. This is the Kingdom of Connacht, another non-aggression pact. We'll go ahead and accept for now. Uh, once I'm done with my war with Wales, I'm not planning on fighting any other wars for a little while. Uh, they want a peace treaty, and they're offering 900 for it. Yeah, that's not happening, folks. I want Wales. So it looks like they are coming out to attack, and they're doing it in such a way that my other army's not going to be involved. That's probably not a good thing. Uh, retreat. Let's see. After reviewing the details, you can retreat from the battle without fighting, giving you the chance to strengthen your forces. Yeah, I want to get both of my armies together here. So we're going to lift the siege for the time being, but we're going to send both armies in. It's just going to set me back a little bit in terms of the timing of the siege. Wavering loyalty. Robert, rumor has it this man's loyalty is wavering. If we are to avoid civil war, we must ensure that it does not fall any further. So we've got a couple of folks. But here's the thing. John's about to die. I know that. He dies, I think, in 1215 or 1216. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about this a whole lot. I'll go ahead and sign Magna Carta. It's in effect for the entire reign of your king. Awesome. He's not reigning much longer. So... Uh, looks like Aragon declared war on France. Good thing I'm not in a full alliance with them. Faction encounter Duchy of Bavaria. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to get both of these armies up here again. Siege to the settlement. And restart this siege. 
None will escape. But then go ahead and send the army that just retreated to join them. Now we're going to just sit tight right there. Now if one gets attacked, the other one will be there to help with that attack. We're back up to uh, 5,000 in the treasury. Maybe time to look at some other upgrade possibilities. Not enough there for that or that. We can upgrade the wheat fields to a wheat farm in Nottingham. Let's do that. Okay. We're looking at growth here. Growth will allow additional things to be built once we get there. All right. So maybe by assigning some of these unhappy types as governors in various places, it'll get them a little happier with me and therefore not as likely to want to rebel. I don't know. Certainly worth the effort. All right, I think we're, we're maxed out for now. No more edicts at the moment. Bloodshed. Wales is really up in their game, man. Now they're offering me 1500 for a peace treaty. Uh, no, not happening. I want Wales. Let's see if they come out to attack this time. If they do, that would be ideal, because I'd rather fight them on open ground than have to attack the, ca the castle. Fourth Lateran Council, Pope Innocent III proclaimed a new crusade to free the Holy Land from the Saracens. Not interested. All right, the, the siege is going to continue. It doesn't appear that he's coming out to fight me anytime soon. We've encountered the Kingdom of Norway. Carnarvon looks like they've invested. Our, our, our army has begun investment of this army settlement. Their enemy settlement, they are surrounded. Denmark and Norway are at war. Portugal and the Alamohad Caliphate are at war. All right, we're not going to do anything. We've got two turns left until the technology is researched. Benefiting from Wales is offering 2100 now. Not happening, folks. But they're going to, I mean, they're basically offering their whole treasury at this point. Who's this? The uh, Upstall Boom League. Yeah, we'll take a non aggression pact. We're going to get along with everybody right now. That can always be changed. New Pope elected, Pope Honorius III, His Holiness. Congratulations. The Fists of the Father. We lost 329 men. It uh, looks like in winter time here. The cold makes corpses, yes. We should have a new king now, too. Maybe he's going to die after this turn. All right, how's this coming? I think we still probably need another turn before we can... Uh... Now we've got a, a battering ram and two light siege towers. Uh, he's got 21, 2200 men. We've got about 2700. Ah, uh, boy. I think the longer this goes, the worse things are going to become. So I think we're going to go ahead and fight this siege out. As the attacking force, you may choose to wait for more favorable weather. I don't know. It looks pretty nice at the moment. So let's get our deployment started. All right. So Carnarvon was a pretty substan substantial castle and... Uh, I expect this to be hard, but it looks like my whole army is all kind of in one place. All right, so here's where my lack of knowledge comes into being. I really am just not that familiar with use of your missile this particular game and the fighting. I'm just going to kind of go with my basic understanding of how these things should work. Where's our reinforcements? Okay, there's our reinforcing army. They're just now getting to the battlefield. And do, does he have a force out there? Uh, it looks like this is just... I don't know what that is. We'll head over there and check it out, though. The enemy has All right. Spotted. Looks like he's spread out throughout the town. So we'll start getting those things up there. Obviously, we'll take our... Archers up. But for the most part, we'll kind of keep everybody else back. Until we figure out what's going on here. Let's go take a look at my other force. Oh, I can't. Interesting. The battlefield looks beautiful. I mean, the, the detail on the terrain is really pretty neat. Even got some birds flying around. That's pretty pretty cool. 
Yeah, we're pretty early on in terms of technology and such, so... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. And hopefully we'll get some experience from this battle. Where's my other tower? It's a little further back. Let's get some of these swordsmen. Oh, we've got a battering ram too, that's right. Oh, we should have been bringing that up. You can see that they don't have as many men as they did because of the attrition that took place. That's why I chose to attack now before there was even more attrition. Ah, oh, looks like my archers are already firing. They haven't killed anybody yet. So he's got spearmen up there. That's why I'm kind of holding back with my horsemen for now. Wow, I didn't time this very well as far as my siege equipment. Where's the rest of my force? They're way over here. He's got a lot of men, but they're all spread out. All right, what's going on here? We're in, okay. Still need to break down that door so we can get our horsemen in. All right, what's happening here? They haven't lost anybody yet. Right now, it looks like he's just kind of hiding under his shield walls, and he's throwing javelins at me. It looks like, ooh, boy. Let's wait until these other ones get up before we start really attacking. Now we're losing, man. You got everybody waiting down there. I guess we're gonna have to go in and attack. We might lose some of these lead units. Get in there, guys. We got a big mess right now. How we doing? So far, so good. Those javelins getting thrown up with spears. Here comes the uh, battering ram. Combat pretty even at the moment. No friendly fire issues apparently so far. All right, our reinforcements are starting to arrive. Enemy's gates have been destroyed. They've destroyed our siege equipment. That's fine. I don't care. Now that thing's kind of in the way, but that's all right. We've got spearmen up front, so that means we can't really go in with with the horses just yet. We're going to have to lead with swordmen. Looks like we're about to break the initial defense. All right, is he sending these units over yet? No, they're kind of hanging tight over there. Gotta watch what they do.
Nice. So far, so good. We've got five units inside the castle now. The enemy have rallied their units. All right, here they come. He's now sending the rest of the forces. If we can get get up on top of these walls. Here we go. The music's pretty awesome too. Unlike most games, I've left the music on for this one. Oh no, I don't know who I just sent over there, but I didn't mean it. Once I deal with these spearmen, I'll send my horsemen in. How are we doing on these guys? I want to get them off of those walls so I can get my archers up on the walls. Horsemen, let's do this. That's the king's bodyguard. I'm not going to send them just yet. Alright, we got to deal with these spearmen up here. It looks like we're, our archers are dealing with them. They're down to half strength. Of course they've reached the walls. It's their... their walls. All right, let's get the rest of the army inside. I'm going to get the archers up on the walls now. I have no idea how this is going in terms of the casualties. I feel like it's going well. I haven't had any of my forces routed yet. It's just such a kind of a melee mess at the moment trying to get inside. I love the colors. Like if you look at the knights, how they each have their kind of the symbols of their coat of arms. So cool. All right, here comes his horses now. I did get one unit of spearmen in here. There's a lot of dead laying there. Look at all that. Jeez, that's crazy. up on these walls yet they're getting there I'm losing a lot of men here but I've got a lot behind them get these longbowmen.
Yeah, you better run. We've got a few units that are not doing so well. We're going to actually pull them out. Make room for the fresher ones to get up front. I don't know why these archers are up here, but I don't want them up there. We're still sending units in. What a mess. All right, we're caught up to some of his spearmen. Archers are charging down the hill at me. get back there and deal with those archers. Let's see if we can get back past these guys. We've got a big log jam here anyway. We just got to break through here. some of his men that have shattered. All right, how are things over here? Not so good. They're tired. They're doing okay. Is that the king's bodyguard? I thought I told them to stay out. William King's bodyguard. Okay, that's just the uh, the two different generals. Right, we've got just one unit of horsemen to deal with. Yeah, I figured they were going to break over there. Alright, we've broken through on this side. I'm going to send a couple of these unit of billmen over to that side to deal with them. The rest are going to charge forth over here. i wipe him out pretty quick. Nope, didn't mean to do that. Okay, let's speed things up a little bit. unit has perished. Yeah, it happens. Looks like we've mostly just got to deal with archers over here now. And once we do that, we can bring this group around the other side and really deal with him. side of him here is what I need to do. Oh, 
Okay. What if we get these guys around here? So we can hit these archers over here. They're all just kind of bunched up right now. Turn to the battle. Oh, whatever, that's fine. <laughs> Taking a long time to kill these archers. Finally breaking through these spearmen, and now we can go get at the archers behind them, and that'll be the end of that. And then we just need to get up there and take the objective. That's where he's headed now. He's headed to make a last stand gonna speed things along now he's just got his general's bodyguard up here king uh that's prince llewellyn the prince of wales not sure why they're going that way Kind of speeding things along now, just so we can finish these guys off. Doesn't seem to be any easy way to get in there, that's why. There's a fortification there. That's why they've got to go all the way around. That's a tower firing on me, a watchtower. Got our spearmen up there, but there's not a lot of them. But Llewellyn's bodyguard is wavering. That's it. All right. We'll wrap this up with this victory. Let's take a look at the final stats, and then uh, we'll wrap this up for this episode. I would love to hear your thoughts on everything. All right. So we took out almost his entire army. I lost 1,200 men, but inflicted 1,800 casualties. Not bad for my first siege. And I got pretty reckless there at the end. I was just trying to move it along. Uh, I probably could have been a little more cautious and a little more careful with what units attacked where, but I was just anxious to win my first victory. So that's what I did. So let me know your thoughts. Use that comment section below. Drop a like if you want to see more from this series, and we will be back in a few days with another episode. Thanks for watching.